is Isis. Hi, hey, Isis. How are you? This is Max. Max, greetings to you. A greeting. So I uh, started uh, going into Egyptian research for various reasons. One of them was, uh, you know, Kufa was wonderful. Uh, so meeting Kufa like sparked my interest, and then it went from there expanding. Kufa is far advanced. Yes. Uh huh. And, and he, he was to advance himself in many ways. He, he he was very helpful uh, on uh, on the DNA uh, research as well. He's uh, he was not as inhibited and, uh, as others, and uh, also was able to understand the questions. Excellent. Um, so we spoke to Osiris uh, briefly last time, and I wondered if um, if you can uh, uh, give uh, your perspective on uh, the past and the present. My perspective of the past is that it was a volatile time uh -huh. and that many things and informations needed protecting. It was also a passionate time because we needed to find our own selves within this realm for we were outside this realm and within it at the same time, and the two did not coincide in an equal fashion. And so we had to make allowances that we would not have otherwise done to be here. Yeah, I was thinking that um, when you look at the some of earlier pictures of uh, Kufu and other pharaohs, they were of huge height, like maybe two heights of the humans or even more. And uh, were you as tall as them? Not as tall, but close. I was a tall female, but I was not as tall as Kufu. It was very interesting, I think, uh, that you were sort of work primarily with humans to organize them into tribes and states and govern them. So uh, I think that's a very interesting uh, scenario where an advanced species try to try to build something uh, long lasting from uh, from humans. Why did you choose to do that? This is a very good question. The answer is that we know that eventually this particular planet would be one of great interests. And we want it to be remembered here as knowing that and uh, postulating or, or predicting some of the future events, which are on the sides of some of our temples and in some of our writings that are under the paw of the Sphinx. Did you meet uh, Lord Rama and uh, Hanuman? Yes, the Sumerian tablets have many Im more informations than you have been able to get so far. So how, how personable was Rama? Rama was at first very personable, but once given a greater responsibility, became consumed with power and consumed with his responsibility. And this gave him a different personality toward the end. Yeah, he sent away Sita, right? Yes. Do you think it was a wise decision? No, not necessarily. But I believe that anything that made him feel insecure was something that he had to deal with immediately. And as he did that, his first response was to send him away so that he didn't have to deal with him. Mm -hmm. How about, uh, I mean, Sita is her, his, her wife, his wife. Yes. Right, so um, how about Hanuman? What's your impression? Of what? Hanuman. 
the monkey god. Yes, but I don't remember interacting with him that much. I sort of avoided that. I thought that he was um, not capable and not really not uh, uh, someone that should have been in charge. Well, uh, not capable mentally or uh, in some other way? Other ways. Mentally, he was very intelligent. But behaviorally and with uh, insight, he was lacking. I see. That makes sense. It fits the, the history, it fits the mythology, yes. Yeah. But was, he was a, a devoted uh, friend of uh, Rama, right? Yes. But even Rama did not trust him. Right, right. Uh, so, uh, tell me your story. How different it was from what we know from uh, the mythology. I do not know the mythology, so I oh. could not tell you. But I can tell you this. My, I was highly honored in many ways to be a part of your civilization for a while. And my husband, Osiris, was part... Uh, was a great part as well. Although he had to be disassembled to hold the secrets of some of the em emissaries that came here, it was a necessity. But he was reassembled and that therefore everything was all right. Uh, so when he was reassembled, how damage was he? There still was some damage with the reassembly, but it was adequate. So, uh, how did you conceive Horus? Osiris was able to do that with me. He was virile enough, yes. So it was natural conception? Yes. I see. Uh, how human were you? I was not very human at all. What was your species? We were from Sirius and Orion. I had Orion and Sirius within me as well. But many would say that I was more serious in acting. Right. Um, and the Horus became uh, an avian, right? A blue avian. Yes. Horus was a so blue avian it, because uh, there was some interaction that caused this to come about. Right. So Osiris, the, Osiris had blue avian in him as well. And there was some blue avian beyond that, and hybridization was involved. So it wasn't purely uh, natural, it was technically assisted. It was assisted, but after the conception. Oh, I see. So the blue avian part was injected later. It was a necessity, yes. Oh, why was it necessary? I cannot um, tell you that. I see, I see. So, um, can you, let us estimate the timing of your uh, rule. When, when was it happening? Well, our rule was in Luxor, I believe. Is that the name? I don't know that name, but uh, I'm looking for the timing. I do not know that they kept times at that t in that per period. It was uh, the time of... Right the assembly of Abu Simbel just before that. So what we know is um, a, an approximate succession of the pharaohs, uh, and that places your rule sometime maybe 4,000 years ago. And also we know um, the destruction of Atlantis was about 23,000 years ago, and the Great Pyramid was built before that. So 
that makes it all very confusing. So were you there before the destruction of Atlantis or after? We were there after. After. But Osiris was around even before that. So he knows of Atlantis and was in actively involved with it, where I was not. How did you meet? That is, we met on Earth, actually. And what brought you to Earth? Our mission to Earth was to establish a rapport with this planet and to build informational outposts that could be reused in future times, which we did establish. The pyramids will be able to come back into use of their per former purposes at the, the given time. The Orions and the Syrians are no longer in charge of this planet, but the Pleiadians are. But we must come back and reset the stargates and repurpose the angling of the pyramids so that they face toward the Orion belt and the Sirius sky as well. This will be uh -huh. very difficult, but it can be done. Uh -huh. So uh, apparently the Giza, Great Giza Pyramid was uh, built before the destruction of Atlantis. Yeah. And uh, uh, the, 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 the destruction possibly had damaged a lot of technologies. I'm sure it did. So if you did your work after that, you had to reconstruct a lot of technologies which were broken, right? The Stargates were still useful, but not the ones that were destroyed in Atlantis. But the 12 major ones still exist, exist dead, and they're still able to be used for the future. And yes, there was a great deal of repairs that were needed after the destruction of Atlantis, as far as I am understood. I was not there but it did cause a great wave of uh, destruction because of how everything was attached to Atlantis. Uh, so the time you were ruling, um, the Egypt was a major force uh, surrounded by smaller races and nations. But were there other great forces like in China and India? There are great forces in many places around the planet. Yes, there cannot be just one great force. We had to have allies with this planet and many species were here to claim that they understood the prophecies and wanted to be noted in the future for helping to bring about what will be one of the greatest accomplishments in the universe. So, did you visit uh, India at the time? How developed was it? India was not developed, but there were some places where the other species had built some technological strongholds. So, which ones were most developed? Madras. Thank you. Um, we have about a few minutes left, and uh, there are so many questions. Yes, you will have to, you are frozen and are not. I guess I would have to ask once more. Uh, ask what, what do you think about DNA? Uh, I mean, no, not what they think. What do you, uh, can you advise on the uh, sacred codes in DNA? Is it your specialty? It is not my specialty, but the secret codes in DNA unlock all the things that are on each human. And that is how you are created. They are all separate and unique. It's like your serial number. Right. And when people are um, 
pray and connect to you as a goddess. Are you also serving as a goddess? I serve as a council, but I do not want to be noted as a deity. But I do counsel when necessary. Uh, are you incarnated at the moment? I have several facets of my personality and my uh -huh. DNA spread around your planet. Uh -huh. And that is all I can say. Oh, so you are incarnated as humans? I have some portions of my DNA here, yes. Oh, I was talking about the spirit. No. The spirit is not here. Right. So these people would be descendants of uh, Horus? Technically, yes. I see. Um, for, for the closing today, I would like invi to invite a blessing. And uh, we'll have to close because the time is running out. Very well. Here is one I've learned from Horus. He was a great, great leader. Von Hut Yat Sika Kershvya Ar Mokwata Akshes Mietit Wit in Dapr Frat Shanjafia Quit Ubia Munga Aas Shakalpio. We take our guidance from all the constellations, but yet the light that reaches us is too dim for us to know their brilliance. However, we can give them their due as we know that we are from other places and these places give us energy that we can use everywhere. Thank you very much. You're welcome. This is Isis. But I can speak through all the voices of the ages. And when I said my spirit is not here, it, that was not quite true. My spirit is there in one person. But yet, I, it is a twin spirit of myself. So okay. I have to make that correction. Okay. Much love. Much love. What is it? Shaka. Not. Kota. How cute are Hello. Hello. Um, Jim, welcome back. 